Naval aviation represents one of the most critical, versatile, and lethal components of the United States Navy. In just about any conflict the United States may find itself in, especially with a major power, naval aircraft will play a significant role. For this reason, the Department of Defense, and of course, the Department of the Navy, regularly plan on how best to equip, train, and utilize the force. Not long ago, the U.S. Navy released a document outlining its vision for naval aviation into the year 2035. This document has been noted for having a clear outlook on the challenges that naval aviation is expected to face, some ways to confront those challenges, and it also has some fascinating and juicy details about what is to come down the line, especially with the Navy's sixth generation fighter. So make sure you stay for all of that. I'll break down this document and other important information, which will be supported by publicly available government documents and credible academic resources. As always, I want to bring you the best information possible on these topics. So make sure you like the video, subscribe, and check out Patreon because the larger this channel gets, the access to more resources I'll have. The Navy's challenges are vastly different from what it has experienced over the last few decades. Like every other branch of the U.S. Armed Forces, there is a need to modernize and change to be successful in a great power conflict, especially when an adversary like China has focused so much of their own modernization on exploiting the potential and existing weaknesses in the U.S. Navy's way of war. So let's start by looking at the challenges the Navy expects to face. The Naval Vision says, Our adversaries, both near-peer and regional threats, have demonstrated the ability to develop and employ an increasing number of high-end capabilities at a pace not seen since the height of the Cold War. It goes on to say that both China and Russia are modernizing and growing their navies. They are implementing new technologies and doing everything within their power, short of armed conflict, to erode our capabilities and advantages. In fact, over the next 10 to 15 years, the Navy expects the following to be major challenges that they'll face. Increased People's Liberation Army-Navy Aircraft Carrier Inventory. Improved People's Liberation Army Air Force capabilities and capacity to include fighters, bombers, and special interest aircraft. Advanced kill chains that extend over great distances. The proliferation of complex threat emitters. Command, control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and targeting networks, otherwise known as C4ISRNT. And finally, information warfare attacks. Already, we can see some of these challenges becoming a reality. For example, China's new Type 003 aircraft carrier, the Fujian, launched on June 17, 2022. The Fujian represents an additional Chinese carrier that could be at sea at any time, and it brings several new capabilities that the United States has not faced from China before. The Fujian aircraft carrier is similar in size to the U.S. supercarriers like the Nimitz and Ford class. In addition, rather than the ski jump bow to launch aircraft, the Fujian will have an electromagnetic launch system for her aircraft like the Ford does. This launch system will enable the new Chinese carrier to facilitate the operation of airborne early warning and other larger aircraft from her deck. The United States Navy recognizes that the size and capabilities will level the playing field to some degree in the Pacific. As China and other nations increase the size and capability of their forces, what is the U.S. to do? In the Navy's vision of aviation into the future, there was a theme of needing to increase the speed and range of platforms and weapons. This makes sense when one considers the sheer size of the Pacific. In addition, the Navy also said the following would be needed. New stealth technologies to reduce radio frequency and infrared signatures. Enhance passive and active kill chains. Better offensive and defensive cyber warfare capabilities. The utilization of advanced networks. Hypersonic and directed energy weapons. The enhanced utilization of machine learning and artificial intelligence to decrease decision-making timelines. The increased use and capabilities of unmanned aircraft like the MQ-25 to serve as a tanker for aircraft at sea, the MQ-4C to conduct intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and targeting, as well as the MQ-8C Fire Scout with more advanced radar and other systems to enhance its mission. One thing to note about the use of unmanned aircraft is not only will be bringing new systems online be important, but finding new ways so that they can team with manned systems. For example, the MH-60 and the LCS will likely receive enhancements to better allow for manned and unmanned teaming. Finally, improvements and deployment of Ford class carriers. So let's talk about this last point because much is talked about in the Naval Aviation vision regarding the Ford class carriers. Most notably, it says that the Ford class is a revolutionary jump in carrier aviation designed to fight and win over near peer adversaries in great power competition. This is done through various improvements over the Nimitz class in areas like dual band air search radar, advanced arresting gear, an electromagnetic aircraft launching system, 
an enhanced deck configuration, an increased electrical generating capacity, and finally, improved survivability features. By the year 2035, the United States is expected to have commissioned four of these supercarriers. The Gerald R. Ford, which is currently in service, will be joined by the John F. Kennedy, the Enterprise, and the Doris Miller, with one currently unnamed Ford-class carrier, currently known as CVN-82, set to be commissioned a year later in 2036. As the Ford class begins to replace the carriers of the Nimitz class, the role of the supercarrier will not diminish. As the Navy Aviation Vision says, large deck CVNs remain effective, relevant, and potent year after year and decade after decade because they are adaptable platforms in which evolving air wings can deploy. In addition, large deck CVNs are the most survivable, agile, resilient, and lethal airfields in today's security environment and will remain so for the future. A large size supports an air wing with enough aircraft to simultaneously conduct long-range power projections, sea control, and surveillance missions in nearly all environmental conditions and sea states. While aircraft carriers are a huge part of naval aviation, much was written about the aircraft themselves. And I won't lie, this is where I got the most excited. The Navy Aviation Vision says that the carrier air wings of the 2030 achieves a complementary mix of the F-35, the F-A-18 Block III Super Hornet, the next generation fighter known as the F-A-XX, with the F-A-18 Block III's providing the backbone of the air wing through 2035. So let's dive into some of the information about these aircraft. The F-A-XX represents the next stage of evolution for the United States military with the aim of being the first sixth generation aircraft. Of course, little information is publicly available at such an early stage of development for this aircraft. We do know, though, it is expected to have the option to be manned or unmanned. It will also implement new stealth technology to make it even stealthier than the F-35. It'll have sufficient power and cooling systems to leverage directed energy weapons, like lasers. It'll also have enhanced sensors and the ability to conduct cyber warfare. According to the document, the F-A-XX will start to see service in the 2030s and begin to replace the F-A-18s. It is expected to attack ground targets, air targets, and anything at sea. As such, the F-A-XX is expected to carry a larger payload, be faster, and have a longer range than the planes it is set to replace. As for the new Block III Super Hornets, Boeing reported in September of 2021 that the Navy accepted their first two aircraft. These new Super Hornets have a smaller radar cross-section with the implementation of radar absorbent coatings. Of course, it won't be as stealthy as the F-35C, but every little bit helps. The new Block 3s also have an advanced cockpit system with larger digital multifunction displays and a computer processor that is 17 times more powerful than its predecessor, enabling the new Super Hornets to leverage enhanced networking and targeting options. One thing that has yet to be determined is if the Navy will request that it integrates conformal fuel tanks as Boeing originally proposed. An important feature of the Block 3 Super Hornet is its longer life expectancy, rated for 10,000 flight hours rather than the 6,000 of the current Super Hornets. So it won't be too difficult for these Super Hornets to continue to be the backbone of the carrier air wing into 2035. The F-35C will also continue to have an important role in naval aviation into the future. Its stealth and passive detection technology will allow it to gather intelligence easily and share that information with the rest of a carrier battle group. Similarly, the capabilities of the F-35C make it the Navy strike platform of choice. As planned, the F-35 will replace some of the current F-A-18s used by the Navy, though as we saw with the integration of the Block 3 Super Hornets, the F-35C won't fully replace them. Other aircraft that are part of a carrier air wing are also given some attention in this document. For example, we'll still see the EA-18G, the E-2D, the MH-60R, and S in 2035 performing their same roles, but with some upgrades. However, we do see some changes though with how the Navy will leverage some technologies to better enhance the force, such as training with AR, VR, AI, and other technologies to free up more aircraft for the fleet. Additionally, we also learn about ways that the Navy intends to improve its supply chain using machine learning and analytics to increase the number of aircraft that are available at any given time. So now that we've looked at the Naval Vision into 2035, what does this all mean? For the most part, it appears the Navy doesn't expect to change too much over the next 10 to 15 years. Four out of the 11 carriers will be Ford class, meaning the majority of the carriers will still be Nimitz class. There is no talk of increasing the number of carriers or leveraging light carriers. F-A-18s will still be the main aircraft used on these carriers, though there will be some more F-35s and maybe even the F-A-XX coming into play, but there's still a big question mark about that. I mean, there is some skepticism. Brian Clark at the Hudson Institute thinks that the FAXX program will likely turn into a modification or an upgrade to the F-35 or F-A-18 Super Hornet. 
Now, this isn't to say that the fleet won't be more capable or lethal in the future. Block 3 FA-18 Super Hornets will provide an advantage. The use of new and more unmanned aircraft will play a role, and there will likely be new weapons like hypersonic and directed energy weapons that the aircraft will employ from more Ford-class carriers. I would say that this vision does appear to be a realistic interpretation of what the future looks like. Unless a crisis arises, the resources, shipbuilding infrastructure, and funding for the Navy will likely not change much. Therefore, it wouldn't be realistic to think that the capabilities will significantly change either. Of course, there is more detailed information about the changes to naval aviation, but that is in the more detailed and classified version of this document, which I don't have access to, nor am I going to try to get my hands on. So what do you think? If this is what the Navy becomes in the future, do you think it'll be ready to meet the challenges outlined earlier? I'm interested to hear what you think and also what your favorite part was. So make sure you put your information in the comment section below. So thanks for watching this episode of Learning Military. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and if you haven't already, check out Patreon. Please come back for more. Thanks for watching.